Hi there, my name is Austin Blackstone. I'm the developer evangelist for ARM Embed OS and Pelion uh, services in the Americas and Japan. And today I'm going to be talking to you about an end-to-end -end demonstration we have of using Embed OS, the Pelion services, and Treasure Data all together to enable full end-to-end -end device lifecycle management and in-field firmware updates. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we're going to be doing today is using Embed OS to register with the Pelion Connect service to verify that devices are up and running and send basic device usage stats to and from the Pelion dashboard. We will also be sending temperature values every 10 seconds from the Embed OS device to the Treasury Data platform. Then we will compute a moving average of those temperature values in the Treasury Data platform and then push those back down to the device to be used as a new algorithm base using the Pelion update service. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is compile our code. So I'm going to run embed compile dash dash flash and then run a terminal so that we can see it once it's done flashing so we can see the local output of the device. Uh, what this code is going to do is assume a base of 22 degrees Fahrenheit and then report any values above that to the cloud. Uh, it is also going to run a blinking heartbeat on the device running every two seconds. And that's going to be that. So you can tell that it, the binary is now flashing to the board because that LED is flashing. Once it's finished flashing, the device will connect back up and we'll be able to read the local output on our terminal. So there we go. The device is restarting. Sure enough, there's our terminal. And we can see that the algorithm printed out is it, it's assuming a value of 22. It's connecting to the network, and we'll be able to see it in the Pelion dashboard shortly as soon as it registers. Looks like it's connected to the network, and now it's registering, and sure enough, it's registered at some point. So this device ID starts with 0169 and ends in 397. So if we go and look in our device directory, we can see, sure enough, device 0169 ending in 397. That's our device. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it's got. Uh, I happen to know that this board has got two resources that I've set up. One is a button and one is the temperature value. So let's take a look at the button first. So this could be any value you want. I'm just going to go ahead and press the button click so it shows up a few times. So I'm going to press it one, two, three times. And sure enough, you can see on our local terminal the click showing up and in the cloud the click showing up. Just to show you some of the latency, I'm going to press it again in real time going one, two, three. So we're at a total of six now. And sure enough, you can see it locally and in the cloud. So this just gives you some idea of the rapid response time that we're able to produce with uh, the Pelion Connect service. Now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and take a look at the temperature resource. So this is, again, the temperature value that I'm sending up. And sure enough, you can see the last resource sent was 250794. And the last value we're reading is 250794. We even have a little history graph here of locally stored data in our uh, browser's cache. So this is all really good for monitoring active devices in the field and getting live data from them. Uh, but what this does not provide is any means of caching or long-term storage. For this, we prefer to use treasure data because it works first and best with our service. So these sensor values, these uh, temperature values are being sent both to the Pelion Connect service and to the treasure data database backend. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we go over to a treasure data account, we can, say that we, we can see that we have a demo database and a sensor value table in that database. Here are a couple of values. Uh, I've got over 140 records in here currently. Uh, and you can see that sure enough, it's getting temperature of 25, 25, 25, plus or minus a little bit of wiggle room. So these are all values that are being sent from the device stored in the cloud. And that's all good and fine. But now let's do something with that data. I say let's compute a moving average and then push that back down to the device. So if we go over to our queries table, we can run a query on this table. This is written in Presto and can be run entirely in treasure data. And so here we're going to select a moving average of the temperatures in the sensor value table. I'm just going to go ahead and click run. And so that's going to run for me. And sure enough, the average computed across all of them is 25.071. So that's a solid moving average. So let's go ahead and now push this back down to the device. And we're going to do that by recompiling our binary and adding this over the algo value. So if I say embed compile dash d algo equals this value, what this is going to do is override the algo macro. 
and compile it into our binary. So I'm compiling. Notice I'm not flashing. I'm not doing anything to the local device. You can still see it's uh, continuing to do what it was doing as before on the left-hand side. So this is going to take a quick second to compile, so we're just going to wait for that to finish. So we've just compiled the algorithm into our device. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and flash the device with the new algorithm value. And we're going to do this by running the embed dm command. This is going to run an update on the device of the device ID. You can see here the device ID matches from earlier. And I'm setting my target name to be the target of the board that I have in front of me. So if I go ahead and run this, we're going to see two things happen. One, on the dashboard for, for the Pelion the Pelion services, so the Pelion, on the Pelion dashboard under device update, and right there you see authorization granted, that's it running its update. So if we go to firmware update, update campaigns, we can see that this campaign is now active. I just created it. You can see it running on the device over here, and you can see it if you look very closely on the device screen that the update is running as well. So this gives us both a local visual feedback, a local terminal feedback, and a uh, Pelion dashboard feedback that the firmware update is actually running and the campaign is active. What we're now going to see is here in a couple of minutes, this campaign is going to finish when it hits 100% because we're only doing one device. When this device is done, uh, the campaign will finish. It'll offload itself from the website. The device will restart and it'll be running the new algorithm. And we'll be able to verify that by seeing the printf that comes out. Okay, now you can see that the device is restarting and then it's loading the new firmware that it just downloaded in the bootloader into active flash memory. Once this is finished, it'll verify that the update uh, has a hash check against it and a couple other security measures and then it will boot into that firmware. So that's what's going on, on the device right now. If we look at the command line code that we just ran, it is waiting for that device to re-register to the network. Uh, so you can see that it's trying to connect to the network. As soon as it connects to the network and grabs its device ID, it'll send information up to the Pelion Cloud client, verifying that it has in fact updated. And sure enough, it just connected, uh, our script just completed, and our update campaign just finished as well. So you can see that the update campaign is no longer running because the device reconnected and confirmed, hey, I'm now running the new firmware. So that is how it all works, start to finish. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the entire thing. You can even see right here that the algo value has been updated. And so that is how you can run an end-to-end -end application using EmbedOS, Treasure Data, and the Pelion Connect and Update services. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions for me, you can find me on the usual social media channels or reach out to me directly at austin.blackstone at arm.com. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.